Data Types in PLSQL Here we will discuss different data types in PLSQL. As I said earlier, we can declare constants and variables in the declaration section. Here we are going to see some data types in PLSQL. Let's start with the definition of a data type. A data type specifies the storage format, constraints, and valid range of values. PLSQL supports variety of scalar, composite, and LOB data types. The scalar data type has no internal components, but the composite data type has internal components and we can manipulate these internal components. The LOB type variables are used to store large size data in the database. PLSQL supports all the data types supported by SQL. Here we will see the general data types in PLSQL. Look at this table. This table shows the various data types used in PLSQL. Let's discuss some of the basic scalar data types. First, we will see the number data type. This type of variable is used to store fixed and floating point numbers. Let's see the syntax. Number, precision, scale. Here, precision specifies the total number of digits, and scale specifies where the rounding occurs. Next, we will discuss the character data type. It stores the fixed length of character data. See this syntax, char, maximum length. We can specify maximum length up to 32,767 bytes. Varchar2. This data type is used to store variable length character data. See this syntax, varchar2, maximum length. Here we can specify the maximum length up to 32,767 bytes. Boolean. This data type is used to store the values true and false and the non-value null. This data type doesn't take any parameters. Date. This data type is used to store fixed length date values. The date data type takes no parameters. Valid dates for date variables run from January 1, 4712 BC to December 31, 4712 AD. Row ID and UROW ID. Generally, in an Oracle database, all data is stored as rows. Internally, every database table has a row ID column, which stores binary values called row IDs. Each row ID represents the storage address of a row. A physical row ID identifies a row in an ordinary table. A logical row ID identifies a row in an index organized table. Row ID PLSQL LOB data types and special data types. Now we are going to learn about some of the special data types in Oracle 10G. First, we will see LOB data types in detail. Before we get to know this data type, let's see the meaning of LOB. LOB is known as large object. LOB type variables are used to store data in large size. There are many data types like B-file, B-LOB, C-LOB, and N-C-LOB in the LOB type. These types are used to store blocks of unstructured data, and these data types are used to store text, graphic images, video, and sounds. We can store a maximum of 4 gigabytes of data in these variable data types. In Oracle 10G, we can also convert CLOBs to char and varchar2 types, and vice versa, or BLOBs to raw and vice versa, which helps us to use LOB types in most SQL and PLSQL statements and functions.
First, let's see the data type bfile. BFILE data type is used to store large binary objects as files in the operating system. These files are stored outside the database. Every bfile variable stores a file locator, which points to a large binary file on the operating system. The locator includes a directory alias, which specifies a full path name. B files are read only, so we cannot modify them. The size of a B file is system dependent but cannot exceed 4 gigabytes. B files do not participate in transactions, are not recoverable, and cannot be replaced. Next we will see the data type B blob. Blob data type is used to store large binary objects in the database. Every blob variable stores a locator in the database which points to a large binary object. The maximum size of a blob is 4 gigabytes. Blobs can be used in transactions, they are recoverable, and they can be duplicated. Now let's discuss the type C LOB. CLOB data type is used to store large blocks of character data in the database. It supports both fixed width and variable width character sets. Every CLOB variable stores a locator which points to a large block of character data. The maximum size of a CLOB type is 4 gigabytes. CLOBs can be used in transactions. They are recoverable and they can be replicated. And finally, we'll discuss about type NCLOB. NCLOB data type is used to store large blocks of N char data in the database. It supports both fixed width and variable width character sets. Every NCLOB variable stores a locator, which points to a large block of N char data. The size of an NCLOB cannot exceed 4 gigabytes. NCLOB data types participate fully in transactions. They are recoverable and can be duplicated. From the discussion in this section, you should have a general idea about LOB data types in PL SQL. In the next section, we will see some new data types. Now we will see two new data types, percent type and percent row type. These two data types are used to declare a variable with reference to the table. Let's see their uses. Percent row type is used to specify a complete row from a table. Percent type is used to specify the particular column from a table. Here, let's see how to declare percent row type variable. Percent row type is declared within the declaration section of the PLSQL. We can declare a variable percent row type like this. Record details percent row type. Here we have created a local variable named record as a row type. So this variable is recorded as a row in the details table. We can store table data as rows in this variable. Let's see the declaration of a percent type variable. Name details dot name percent type. City details dot city percent type. Here we have created two local variables named name and city. These two variables are created with the type of the name and city columns in the table details. From this you can understand the use of type and row type data type in PLSQL. Now we are going to discuss data type conversion in PLSQL. Let's see the meaning of data type conversion. Data type conversion converts a value from one data type to another data type. There are two types of data type conversions. They are explicit conversion and implicit conversion. Here we will look in detail at an explicit conversion. In this type of conversion, the built-in functions are used to convert one data type to another data type. Two date or two number is used to convert the char data type to a date data type. To char function is used to convert the date data type to a character data type. We have already discussed these functions in SQL. Next type of conversion is the implicit conversion. It is an automatic data type conversion. 
To specify conversions implicitly, we must use built-in functions which will convert values from one data type to another. PLSQL conversion functions are similar to those in SQL. In this lesson, we have discussed some special data types in PLSQL. From this lesson, I hope you got an idea about all the data types in SQL and PLSQL. PLSQL Declaration and Executable Block We have already talked about different blocks in PLSQL programs and different data types in our earlier lessons. Now we are going to learn about the declaration and executable section of a PLSQL program. First, we will see the declaration section. In PLSQL, the declaration section starts with the keyword declare, and it contains a list of variables and cursor definitions. We will see a simple program to understand this. Let's see a program to find addition of two numbers. See this program. This program shows the value 10 in the output. In this program, we have declared three variables, namely num, val, and total, in the declaration section. In the executable section, we have written the statements to add the two values, and finally we print them on the screen. Now we will discuss the executable section. The executable section always starts with the keyword begin. In this section, we can use the SQL commands to manipulate the database. Here we can also manipulate the variables given in the declaration section. In executable section, we can use the cursors declared in the declaration section. We will also discuss cursors in an upcoming lesson. Now we will see a simple program to manipulate data from the database. Let's use the following program. In this program, we have declared the variables, namely emp number, emp name, and salary, in the declaration section. In the executable section, we have used the select statement to select the employee number, name, and salary from the employee table. These values are written into the local variables. Then, the value of the salary column is updated, and the operation is committed to make the update visible to all the users. Finally, the PLSQL block is closed with the end statement. We can also do other DML operations in the PLSQL block.